Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to Tuesday Tea with Elsa, and we have Ari today. Ari and I thought we would do something a little bit different for tea time today. Um, we're going on 42 episodes of tea time. Um, I'm actually struggling a little bit to keep coming up with new ideas. So if you guys have ideas for me of things I should talk about, please let me know. For today, I'm actually going to put my teacup down and Ari and I are going to take a walk and we're going to invite you guys to take a walk with us um, because this is one of the things that Ari and I do and I thought it'd be kind of fun to do tea time in action. So for those of you who've done my Freedom Based Training 101 courses, you know a lot of the beginning work is at the standstill. We watch the horse, we look for the ears moving, the eyes moving, the mouth moving. We look for thinking signs and we change places around the horse's body. And the premise is that it matters to the horse when we move, how we move and where we move. And when we get it right, and we make enough good decisions for ourselves, the horses start letting us make decisions for them. Hello, Kristen. I'm glad you could join us. So um, Ari and I are at a point where I've done a lot of this. He's pretty comfortable letting me make decisions around him. And so we're at a point where I can make decisions for him. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my hand up here and I'm gonna push the skin over and forward. And that's going to take us for a walk. And Ari gets to decide where we're going to go. I have closed the fences on the round pen so that he can't take us out of Wi-Fi signal so I can talk to all of you guys. Ordinarily when we do this, uh, Ari can take us off into the woods and through the forest. Um, but we're not going to do that today because I wouldn't be able to talk to you guys. So what's happening is Ari's taking a walk and I am walking along with my hand on his back where eventually I will ride and I will sit on him. What I find is that horses are mostly comfortable if you change positions often, unless they've been trained to be okay with you holding one place. If you think of a horse herd, they change positions around each other a lot. And as people, we tend to take a position and then hold it. And that's an important thing that they have to learn about people. But as we're walking along, Ari kind of wants to stop here. And when he stops, I'm going to add to that stop and ask him for a backup. So I took his idea and then I added to it. And as you can see, there's a big breath. There's a lick and a chew. He feels good because of the decision I made for his body. And that's the premise of freedom-based training is that we can make enough good decisions for the horse that they look forward to the next thing we ask them to do. So we stand here for a little while. I take a couple of breaths. We enjoy this moment. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push the skin forward and over. And this is something I've trained. He didn't, wasn't born knowing how to do this. And if he starts to get a little bit slow or I want to speed him up, um, we're still at the, really the simple, simple parts of this process. So I can always go ahead and turn him again. And then he's going to pick up a walk and he gets to decide where we go and I'm just going to walk along with him. And this ability to travel with me holding this position at his ribs or his back where I'll be riding eventually is something that he has to get very, very comfortable with before I start riding him. Because I have no tools, I mean, I do have a round pen here, but that's for safety. I try not to ever push him against the fences. Um, because I don't have any tools to push him through fight or flight to manage any of those no answers he might give me. Um, I have to be really careful to work underneath the threshold of the answer no. 
Um, I don't want to put Ari in a position where he's going to say no to me. So what I do is I put him in positions where he's going to say either maybe or yes. Uh, maybe looks like a freeze. They get really still. They don't know whether they want to say yes or no. And um, that's okay. I can nudge him out of a maybe into a yes. But it's pretty difficult if he says no to me for me to turn that into a yes. So here, he kind of wants to slow down. I'm going to take that slow down and I'm going to bring it into a backup. And then from that backup, we're going to look at him. There's a little lick and a chew. He feels better. That's going to leave him with a positive feeling about that backup step. This ends up being my stop. It ends up being my ability to have brakes or slow him down later when I'm riding. I'm going to go ahead and switch sides here, partially because my arm's getting tired. And we're going to do a little bit from this side. The idea for this tea time was the idea of shared values, okay? So right now, Ari is sleeping in the sun. He's really happy to just be here for a while. And I'm willing to be here with him. You know, it's a really lovely thing to do. But the fact is the timing was important. We are spending time doing what Ari wants to do right after I asked him to do something and he felt good about it. So there's this back and forth between what he wants to do and what I want to do. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn him. I'm going to push that skin a little bit over and forward and we're going to take a walk. Now later on in the training I'll be able to have more specific ideas about where I want Ari to go but for right now I'm just going to work on forward and flow. Forward and flow. And what we're doing is we are establishing that we can walk together and it can be really comfortable. And when we're done walking, we agree on it. It's something we can do together. Um, so you'll see here, Ari is, he hates flies. There was a fly flying around his nose. He's really worried about it. So he's jerking his head around. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and rock his neck a little bit and see if he'll change focus. And then I'm gonna rock his withers a little bit. There's a breath. There we go. So sometimes there are going to be things that bother a horse. And when they're bothered, the question is, do you have something you can do that'll help them? And if you do, that's great. You know, so rocking is one of those things that I've built in here. I can rock his hip and I'm looking for him to feel better. Okay, he moved a little bit. That wasn't what I intended, so I'm gonna try again. Rock the hip. There we go, there's the change of focus. Hey, buddy. So if horses get nervous, worried, upset, they're gonna start saying no to anything you ask of them. Um, exactly, George, this is a conversation between friends. Um, Kristen says, so your focus is only on him, right, or also on the environment? Um, the, the focus changes a lot. I believe in changes of focus. Sometimes it's on him, sometimes it's on the environment, sometimes it's on myself. The ability to change focus is really vital for lowering stress. Hi, Oriana. I'm glad you're here with us for tea time, even though I don't have tea with me today. So we're going to go ahead for a walk again. And as we walk along, Sometimes, as I was saying, my focus is on myself. Sometimes it's on you guys. Sometimes it's out at the environment. Sometimes it's on Ari. The fact that I can change focus is gonna tend to make him feel better about this partnership. So as we walk along, you can see he's pretty calm. He's <laughs> worried about the shadows, I think, on the ground. I'm not usually holding my hand though, like this with the phone as we walk around in the bright sunshine. But these are all things that, you know, he's gonna have to get used to. Um, being a horse that's in partnership with people, there's so much 
that they have to realize is not a threat, particularly as Ari grew up, you know, eight years in the wild before he met a person. And uh, he's not quick to trust, but I sort of love him for that. I love that he considers things so carefully. So the idea for this tea time was the idea that we share ideas. So as we're walking along, this walk is pretty comfortable. At some point, big sigh there from Ari, he's gonna wanna slow down. And when he wants to slow down, I'm gonna take it into a backup. Hopefully he feels better after the backup. We've got to focus out there across the paddocks towards Atlas. And uh, we're just going to keep repeating it. We want him to feel good about the things I ask him to do. Um, Kristen says, so those who make a lot of decisions will also do when things might be unclear. I'm not sure I entirely understand you, Christian, but I think what you're saying is that when we make a lot of decisions, like changing focus to different places, um, we're very aware and we will take appropriate action to help the horses. So that's the goal. Right now, it's just me and Ari. We're hanging out, we're watching Atlas. <laughs> and, um, this is what freedom-based training is. It's hours and hours and hours of us agreeing that we want to do the same things. And when Ari wants to do something, I might add a little bit more to it. And hopefully he feels good about my decision to add to what he wants to do. Over time, he's going to trust me so much, I can ask him to do things that were not his idea at all but I have to be careful with the timing that I ask him at a good time when he's likely to say yes, because we're building habits and patterns here. If I don't have tools, I need strong patterns and habits that saying yes to each other is a really good feeling. So here we are. I'm gonna take my hand up here. Let's see if you can see it. I'm gonna push the skin forward and over forward and over, and that's going to start our walk. You, I don't know if you could hear, there was a big sigh there as we started walking, and that's what we're looking for, is that everything I ask Ari to do, he says, yeah, that was a good idea. That's really fun. I'm glad to do that with you, and it won't last forever. It's just going to last a while, hopefully within the range of what he's comfortable doing. So sometimes we take this all out through the woods. I don't have Wi-Fi out there, so I closed the gates, so we stayed close to the house. Um, but uh, this is our game that we play, and we're just gonna keep building on it and adding to it until more and more things are comfortable for him to say yes to. So here I feel I'm slowing down again. He's gonna stop. I'm gonna back him up. How far do I back him up? As far as I think I can, while still getting a good feeling. There's the lick and the chew, the blinking of the eyes. Let's see if you can see him. That's the idea. Uh, Kim says, do you do the same thing with him out in the pasture when he's eating with his head down? Um, when he's in the pasture, we are still at the stage where I can only ask him to bring his head up for a moment and then bring it back down to the grass. So he and I are not at the stage where we can do a lot of walking on the pasture yet because he doesn't live on the pasture. Um, I'm getting new fences made and hopefully when we have new fences, we'll be out in the pasture full time and then we'll be able to do more there. Um, Kristen says, how would it be with... So Hari, he's the very extrovert, right? More to decide sooner. I think you're thinking of Ocasio as my extrovert. And with Ocasio, yes, I would have to decide a lot more things sooner um, in order to keep his stress lower. He's more extroverted. He needs more entertainment. He needs more things to do. Um, but she says, uh, was, are you sure that sigh was, uh, that's a good idea? Or was it, oh, okay, I'll do it. 
you know, it, it doesn't matter, Patrice, because the fact is that horses want to be in connection and with you. If you don't have any way, like Ari could run away really easily right now. Um, and as a matter of fact, he does when I really have bad timing. I know that he can because he practices that option sometimes. Um, yes, it might be, oh, all right, I'll do that for you. But it also might be, I don't know if you can see his face here. You know, let's take a snooze in the sun here. Isn't it lovely? And that snooze in the sun is lovely because it's in contrast to the walk we just took. Oriana says, is there a reason you do the back up on the chest rather than the nose? Because um, I'm close to the chest when I'm here. When I'm practicing this position where I'm going to sit on his back, I am close to the chest. I would have to walk a lot farther to get up to the nose. But I do practice both. So that is our game today. I'm actually going to let Ari take a nap here. It's a beautiful sunny day. He was lovely for this demonstration while I, my focus was divided between you guys and him. And yeah, Kristen, that's what I believe. Horses want partners. Now, sometimes they're quite content with their horse partners and they don't need human partners. But I think if we put the work in and we really endeavor to have good shared ideas with horses, they want to have us as partners. Not everything is going to be, yay, I want to do that. Some things are going to be, oh, yeah, okay, if you ask, I will do that. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> um, George says, the snooze is shared just like the walk. Things are best shared together. Yeah, but specifically things are best shared together when you make good decisions about when to do the next thing. And that's really what this is about. Do we know when to do the next thing so that we don't overstay the welcome? So that we stay in a place that is easy to keep saying yes to each other, keep sharing new ideas. So thank you guys for joining me for tea time. Ari says thank you too. Can you some say hi? He's very sleepy. Hi. <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful day, evening, nighttime, wherever you are, and I'll see you next week.